Like honestly, Evan Rachel Wood. Like how, wh how do, are you this perfect? How are you this good and this talented? Like what? and welcome back to Vlogmas, the 25 days of the year where I make a video every single day leading up until Christmas. And today we are talking yet again about Westworld because two nights ago was the season one finale of Westworld and oh my god is this show so so good. I said this in the other video I made about Westworld but now that season one is complete I can truly say this is for me the best show on right now. The writing is impeccable, the cinematography is out of this world and the acting is just like it doesn't get any better. If you're somebody who hasn't watched Westworld yet, doesn't know what it is, maybe is looking for a summary, I made a whole video on that. There should be a card popping up and the link will be in the description to go and watch that. This entire video, however, is gonna be my reaction to season one and the finale, so it's gonna be filled with spoilers. Please, please, please do not watch this video if you have not watched the first season yet because you don't want these things to be spoiled for you. Don't do it. You've been warned. So diving right in, the thing that I loved the most about this finale Alley. Philip DeFranco said it best in his video yesterday. He said that Westworld is like a better version of Lost because we actually got answers. Because we really did. They gave us so many answers and what I loved about it was that they gave us all these answers but then gave us new questions so the mystery lives on. And the first thing that I want to talk about is of course Dolores because it makes so much more sense that Dolores has been on this journey and followed this path to find the center of the maze many more times than we have seen or been with her. Like if we are establishing that it is really hard to reach this level of consciousness that just makes so much more sense and it makes it so much more dynamic like of course she's failed a bunch of times trying to find the center of the maze who would find that sort of thing on the first time that they tried so I loved that I think it made it way more realistic so with this new information it would appear that we have followed Dolores ourselves and through at least two attempts to find the center of the maze the first one when she is with William and the second one when she is seemingly on her own but keeps on having these flashbacks so we think she's with William. But it would appear that our current storyline when Dolores is kind of going on her own and having these flashbacks is when Bernard slash Ford start putting the reveries into the hosts. But backtracking, let's talk about what is in my opinion one of the greatest twists, which obviously was William. It's funny because as I was just re-watching it, I remembered that the first time I was watching it, a little dinger went off in my brain when I saw William at the beginning of the episode um, drag dragging Logan by the rope by the horse and something in my brain went off like huh that's interesting he's pulling him the same way that the man in the black hat did like with that other guy episodes ago that's kind of strange but I won't lie the thought didn't go anywhere else besides there I think because also I was very focused on making sure I was understanding everything that was going on but other than that I really did not see it coming until about halfway through the time when William is telling the story of William but I really love this twist because it really makes a lot of sense and I really do recommend that you go and rewatch it because when I rewatched it, I did pick up on little reveries, that's a pretty good term for it, that both William and the man in the black hat shared and it makes sense and it's really a testament to the acting because it was something that I wasn't, I wasn't like trying to infer things about them but I really did notice the second time watching I'm like, oh wow, yeah, I see little things happening there that make sense. And honestly, writers, you did a great job setting us up to all want to rewatch the first season over and over again. I definitely will be in the next coming weeks. Another thing that popped into my brain when I was like just starting to think more deeply about this show now that we have all this information is how important and interesting it is that they chose to have the place that Dolores keeps on returning to to try and find the center of the maze to be a church. Because this show in so many ways has been about spirituality. Spirituality has been a huge theme in this because the creators of the hosts are the humans and so the humans are kind of the gods. In fact, something that I noticed almost instantly when watching this the first time around was that they almost dressed Charlotte to look like a god in this episode. The first time we see her in this episode she's wearing this like white and beige very like heavenly flowy sort of look and then later on when we see her and she's at the party she's in this like very golden very goddess-esque dress and I feel like she really represents the people the guests the humans that feel like they are gods because she's essentially in charge of the park at this point she's really the one pulling
pulling the strings in the background. And we even, one of the first times we see her, see her playing with one of the hosts. You know, she's like kind of toying with what she has created, even though she obviously hasn't technically created them, she controls them. In fact, even in the episode, she says everything is under control. But just like Ford says at the end of the episode, the divine gift is not given by a higher power, it is created in our own minds. And Arnold even reinforces that by saying every choice you make brings you closer. We'll talk more about the Ford stuff in a bit, but I just love that the show took a different approach to spirituality and it didn't take down religion or any of those sorts of things, but it was just so interesting to put the place that Dolores keeps on going back to to be a church and she finds those answers like underneath the church in this like very technological place on her own within her own self. It's such a smart show and I love it. This is a complete side note because we're about to majorly segue, but has anybody else noticed that Teddy is basically real life McCree from Overwatch? Anyone? It's high noon. So next, let's talk about Maeve. Oh my Maeve. <laughs> One of the most gut-wrenching, like upsetting moments of this whole episode is when she is downstairs with Felix and Bernard and she finds out that there's a chance that every choice she's been making so far has not been her own, that this is yet again another storyline. Like the realization and denial on her face, oh my God. It's like obviously everyone is rooting for Maeve. If you're not rooting for Maeve, how how dare you? What's wrong with you? She thinks she's kind of achieved consciousness, but she really hasn't. But it's so interesting because she's the only person that like I'm a little confused or, or I don't feel completely clear on. At the end of the episode when she's on the train and Ford is giving a speech, it seems to indicate that at that moment when she chooses to get off the train that she is making her first choice, like she is making an active decision. And I paid really close attention earlier on in the episode when Bernard was first telling her of like the steps in the storyline to try and prove to her that it's a storyline. And the last thing that he says before she cuts him off is when you reach the mainland. And that's interesting phrasing because like the mainland Land could mean one of two things. It could mean the outside world, that would make sense, but placing the mainland as somewhere that exists in Westworld also makes sense. You really can't know for sure, but I am guessing that this means that from here on out she's making her own decisions and that maybe she was meant to go to the mainland and she's choosing to go back to Westworld. That's what I'd like to believe, and it would make the most sense since it seems like Ford wants them to all actively achieve consciousness, but I don't know. I don't know at this point. I'm just hoping for the best. <laughs> and before we move on, let's actually take a moment to appreciate Maeve because she by far has the best lines of this episode, if not of the series so far. The moment when Felix discovers that Bernard is a host and he looks at his own hands and she's like, for fuck's sake, you're not one of us, you're one of them. <laughs> it's so great. That and when the two of them are parting ways and she goes, oh Felix, you really do make a terrible human being. And I mean that as a compliment. Felix was also one of my favorite characters. He was a great supporting character. Props to that actor. I don't know who you are. You look a lot like Eugene from the Try Guys and it really freaks me out every time. Time, but you're awesome. I think it's the way in that they've styled his hair. It reminds me of like a way that Eugene would style his hair. I don't know. Another line that I really enjoyed was said by Hector to the blonde tattooed badass chick whose name I don't know when she's about to die and he goes, die well. Along with, I'll see you in the next life. My boyfriend and I all season have been calling him not so Antonio Banderas and those two lines just seemed really like lines Antonio Banderas would be given. We mean that in a compliment by the way. We both said after the show ended we were like, he's better than Antonio Banderas. Sorry, Antonio. And finally, let's talk about Ford. Oh my god, what a brilliant like storyline and an entire season of just trying to figure out if he's a good guy or a bad guy or what his intentions are. And I'm so glad that we were given a conclusive answer to that at the end of this season. Like, it's not a mystery anymore because I think that they had dragged that on any longer. It just wouldn't be interesting anymore. They knew when to cap it off. And what a great reveal to know that he really has been setting up Dolores, May, Bernard to all work together to kind of in their own different ways achieve consciousness. And he does that even though that he knows that that means that they basically gotta take down like a bunch of humans. Like there are so many casualties in this war so far. Just in that scene with the blonde chick alone. But it's so cool to know that this whole time that he has really been trying to live out like Arnold's wish of them escaping and being free. Even though obviously like Anthony Hopkins isn't gonna play a huge role in the next season, I'm sure that we are going to see in a lot of ways just how much prep Ford put into this new storyline and making their journey to consciousness work because pretty 
much this whole season we have like not really been believing wholeheartedly Ford when he's saying that he didn't kill Arnold or when he's denying that Arnold is currently affecting their code. It just seems like he's in this weird state of denial. But in actuality he's been being honest, which like, what? And I think again that this is something that makes sense. I think it makes sense that Arnold would only be able to do half the work, that his partner would only have half of the idea of what will bring these hosts to free will. He would also need Ford and his strengths and what he knows about the hosts to make it work. And Ford is ultimately the one that's able to recognize that choice is what makes all the difference with those little reveries. Also, I gotta give credit where credit is due. My boyfriend for episodes now has been saying that Dolores is Wyatt and I really just didn't think that that was gonna be a thing. But lo and behold, she's Wyatt and I'm really excited to learn more about like why that is the way that things needed to go down. Like why exactly she needed to become Wyatt. Like I get it to an extent, but I, I want some more info and I think we'll get some more info. But oh man, did these violent delights have violent ends. I love the smile that we get from William at the end when he gets shot in the arm and he just like is glowing because he realizes that everything he's wanted from the park is now coming true. I really hope he survives. I loved him in this and I want to see more of him and especially now that he's gotten what he wants from the park. I mean if he dies then he's dying happy but like I would prefer, I would prefer it the other way. And overall this has just left me next season wanting to see more of that SW world that we saw for a little bit. I, I don't know if it's like Samurai World or Shanghai World. I don't know. I don't, I'm not as familiar with what era those uh, costumes exactly fit into. But I hope we see that. I hope that we see how the hosts are able to achieve consciousness hopefully quicker than it took Dolores because man did that take a while. And I really, really, really hope that we see the world outside of Westworld and outside of this conglomerate because I've been really hoping all season that we would and when Maeve got on that train part of me was like, you go girl because I want to see the outside world. But I really hope that we see that uh, next season because I'm so interested to see how all this tech and all this other stuff affects the outside world. Like what does that world look like? Above all else, I just can't wait to see more of this level of acting and this level of smart writing next season. I can't stress how impressed I am by every single actor on this show from the extras to the main characters. Everyone was just so in sync. It made the world feel so real. Evan Rachel Wood, uh, she did just an amazing job as Dolores because Dolores is like, for, for all intents and purposes, she's kind of this, supposed to be this like daft girl, whatever, that then becomes enlightened, but she's like kind of got this deep southern accent and she's supposed to be whimsical and, and to make her then badass is so great. Sandy Newton, I mean, she just blew it out of the park. And again, in the beginning, you didn't think that this madam was going to be a main character and so then her to slowly become a main character, you're like, oh shit. Jeffrey Wright playing Arnold and Bernard and making slight changes in between the two of them and just being so dynamic and like, it, oh, oh. Thank you so much for all of your amazing performances. I hope all of you are nominated for awards, but if you are not, please, please know that your acting has not gone unnoticed. That was an incredible story and you did such an amazing time telling it. And that is my reaction to the season finale and season one of Westworld. I am obsessed. I am so sad that I'm going to have to wait until 2018 for this, but if the quality of the show is going to stay this high, then I will wait for as long as I need to wait. Listen, I'm a fan of Sherlock. I'm used to waiting two years for things to come out. But please let me know in the comments, guys, how did you feel about the first season of Westworld? Were you confused about anything? Did I get anything wrong in this video? Because like, I may have. There was a lot. As always, guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and share this video with your friends. And most importantly, hit that subscribe button because again, I'm making videos every single day until Christmas, so you want to be notified about that. Unless you don't, in which case, you can keep that to yourself if you want. <laughs> Otherwise, I love you, Powered by Caffeine Team Beans, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!